These islands were once wrapped in mystery for the ancient Romans, lands at the edge of the world that were seen as almost mystical in nature. But after some attempts and some failures, Britannia, as it would be called, became just another province in the Roman Empire, a province on the periphery that saw rebellion and invasion from people just outside those walls. The Romans didn't create the English, of course. They didn't put the Angles themselves on the island. But the Romans did lay the groundwork for what we think of as England to arise, mainly by wiping away the Britannic kingdoms that came before and influencing this land for 350 years. Wait, seriously? That long? The Romans were in Britain for roughly the same span of time as the British have been in North America. So, what if in an alternate timeline, Rome never conquered Britain? No Hadrian's Wall, no Roman society on the islands, no eventual collapse of that society in the 400s AD. It's no secret that if there is territory, Rome will try to conquer it. But in this alternate timeline, Rome for some reason just cannot hold the island down, or they lose the political will to dominate the southern portion of the island. Say Claudian's invasion fails, say a few more invasions fail, for some reason. Even though there is no Roman conquest, it's not like there isn't a Roman influence on the island at all. They don't change Britain by force, but they do influence the thinking of the southernmost tribes and people through trade. We saw this already in our own history, where the major political division in pre-Roman Britain was whether or not to side with the Romans. This is a much more gradual process, though, than simply going in and deciding for the people themselves, with legions. It'd probably be difficult for the Romans to just sit back and watch as their kind of unofficial allies have to fend for themselves because they were loyal to Rome in the first place. They still probably do get militarily involved from time to time to help out their friends. Think of it more so like a soft power. This would be the largest extent of Roman influence. There would be some trade and semi-alliances, but it never really goes further than that. One fun immediate change from Britain never being conquered by the Romans is the name Britain itself. I know it sounds weird to imagine calling this island anything else, but the name Britain is an exonym from the Romans. Well, technically the ancient Greeks. Britain is the English name of Britannia, and the Latin name for the island and also the province of Britannia came from the Greeks. There were some other names sometimes before the Romans. Herodotus called them the vaguely named Tin Islands, simply because that's where Greece got their tin from. The Celts called this island Predane, and it seems like this word was transferred to the Greeks as Britannic. The Romans switched the P with a B to Britannia. Alba is the name the Scottish currently call their own land, but in fact, outside of the English, other groups have some variation of this Alba name as well, and it all comes from the word Albion, which was another and perhaps original term that the natives used for this island. As while the Romans used the term Britannia, it wasn't until the Normans where the name actually stuck. Oh my, silly me, I completely forgot that a bunch of people invaded this island. The Romans in the grand scheme of British history were not the most culturally or politically influential. Despite being on the island for almost four centuries, when Rome collapsed, that was pretty much it. In Britain, the collapse of Rome was indeed the collapse of everything, the bringer of the stereotypical Dark Ages we often think it led to. Because there are barely any records of the island for a few centuries, villages were left abandoned, and many Romanized people either fled to the mainland as raiders entered their lands, or they transitioned back into the old ways of tribal hill forts. Those leaders that couldn't maintain their own stability and power thanks to the lack of Roman legions, then decided to employ foreign mercenaries, which in most ways led to the eventual betrayal and conquest of the land by the Anglo-Saxons. If Britain never saw Roman colonization, then this destabilization never occurs. The region isn't left reliant on a fallen empire for stability. In such an alternate timeline, when the Romans do collapse across the pond, this isn't a transformative experience for the island, as the Celts of the south, I guess for a lack of better word, aren't as reliant on Rome. England's early history isn't defined by centuries of conquest and assimilation, 
But let's be honest, there's no way to truly know. It's entirely possible that somehow these Celtic kingdoms just fail anyway. What I'm saying is that without Rome being there to eventually fall, the Britons have a better chance at resisting the coming Anglos, and never have a chance to invite them in the first place. Imagine if Wales just sort of extended. Wales and Cornwall are the remnants of the Britonic people that once held power across the entire island. Christianity still would come to these lands in some form or another. It's not likely they would just remain pagan forever. However, since Rome is never able to truly wipe out the Druidic faith in Britain, it's likely that this Albion Christianity would take many influences from former Druidic practices and thinking. Without the Romans outright banning Druidic practices, perhaps they survive until they are eventually blended in with, say, Roman Catholicism. One thing to keep in mind is that when it comes to pre-Roman Britain, nothing is certain. These were people that had no no written language, and much of what we know about them is either from archaeology or the Romans themselves. Here's some general ideas I do have, though. The Brigantes was a colossally influential tribe slash confederation in pre-Roman Britain. Think of them sort of like the Iroquois, with being a collection of smaller tribes. It's possible that without interference, they could have become a truly unifying force in the center of the island. The divisions of England can really come in a whole mess of ways that we can just sort of speculate on. Since no Hadrian Wall keeps the picks at bay for 300 years, our conception of Scotland and England doesn't exist either. In our timeline, the picks were beaten back by the Scoti, who invaded from Ireland. So for all of you Scottish celebrating that England doesn't exist, it's very possible that Scotland doesn't exist either. The divisions of this island that we are familiar with are butterflied out of existence, so take any pick between what wacky states could have been formed. While all Celtic languages, Britonic was still a separate language from Pictish and Gaelic, so there would always be some sort of division between these lands. Now that said, there is still a closer cultural bond between these lands, rather than what we saw in our own history, which was pretty much the English versus everyone else. It would be easier for many of these kingdoms to unify, is what I'm saying. So yeah, Europe culturally at least is broadly split between Germanic, Latin, Slavic, and Celtic realms, with Albion and Ier more united with one another over their shared identity. Parts of the west coast may still have colonists that grow into their own groups on the mainland, like Brittany or Galatia. Or it's possible that Brittany and Galatia don't even exist, as they were the result of Britons fleeing the Anglo-Saxon invasions in the first place. Don't imagine that it would be very similar to how it was before the Romans, with Druids and Hillforts. It was always probably going to Christianize. Britain simply skips an era that it did in our timeline. The thing was, this was a pretty crucial era because it led to all of the other eras that ended up creating the England as we know it. There very certainly is no Norman conquest, yet also there is no place for Anglos, Saxons, and Jutes to raid and expand. Viking settlements as well. Would the Angles simply disappear from history if they never migrated into England? Does their culture become absorbed once the Danes enter from the north? Or would the Saxons and Angles have a far stronger presence on the mainland, keeping the Danes at bay and perhaps developing an alternate history all by themselves? This challenges what we would think of as Denmark and England. Now, much like medieval Ireland, I could imagine the Vikings probably still invade. They just don't take large portions of land like they did in our timeline. They take important ports. This kind of spurs the Britannic kingdoms to eventually go into sailing and shipbuilding themselves. This is a Britain not wrapped in the political wars of medieval France, as without the Norman Conquest, there's no need to claim any throne in France. Which, without the Norman Conquest, just kind of blanks any British history going forward. Maybe that lingering Druidism affects the Britons more than we would think. 
Who knows? While I'd love to go even further with this scenario, I think if I ever did, I'd want to explore the grand implications on the global stage in a video purely dedicated to England not existing. I wanted to keep this video shorter and just focused on the Romans. Sometimes shorter videos do the trick just fine, you know? I say we leave it off at that. In this alternate timeline, what we do know is that the Celtic Islands are the last remnants of a culture that once spanned most of Europe. Now they're in their own little corner. Corner, seen by the rest of the mainland as a distinct island folk, just like in our own. This is Cody of Alternate History Hub. Hallo Freund, wie ich sehe, ist dir das gleiche Schicksal widerfahren wie mir. Schaut auf deinen Schild, mein Freund, es ist nichts als ein Kissen. Wir können nicht, fürchte ich, sie sehen, wir existieren nur, weil ein Nerd einen YouTube-Kanal erstellt hat. Ich fürchte, es ist wahr, nichts, woran du glaubst, ist real. Ich fürchte, es ist wahr. Nichts, woran du glaubst, ist real. Omnes historum memoriam mensi 